Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode, and today we are going to take another look at mass spectroscopy fragmentation, and specifically, I want to review carbonyl alpha cleavage. That's coming up right now. All right, so for carbonyl alpha cleavage, Alpha cleavage is a type of fragmentation pattern that occurs in mass spec. It's not exclusive to carbonyl groups, but this is one of the common times that we see it uh, come out, is when carbonyl groups are present. So I wanted to specifically talk about it in relation to carbonyl groups and the mechanism, as well as what you could expect after that in terms of fragment patterns. Okay, so this is very common in aldehydes and ketones. It tends to cleave apart into two fragments and provide a neutral radical hydrocarbon and it will also provide a carbonyl cation now the carbonyl ends up becoming a carbon uh, oxygen triple bond through some radical mechanism work and we'll see how that occurs and then there is a positive charge so that would be what actually shows up as far as the uh, fragment on the detector when you're doing your mass to charge ratio there Okay, so alpha cleavage, as the name suggests, alpha is going to be that very first carbon directly attached to the carbonyl group. So if you're dealing with an aldehyde, you've got the hydrogen on one side, you've got the carbon on the other. And then if you've got a ketone, you could really take two different paths because you have carbon groups on either side of that carbonyl. So let's take a look at how this works. And what we'll do is we'll use a ketone for uh, an example because we can get two different paths out of that. So that'll be a good little case study to take a look at here. And we won't make the structure uh, overly complicated because we just want to see what's at work here. So let's go ahead and use something like 2-butanone in order to study this. So we'll draw that here. And then the very first step that we have to undergo in order to set ourselves up for the alpha cleavage is that we are going to put our 2-butanone into the mass spec and we will have it undergo some sort of ionization. So it's going to lose an electron. And the result of that is going to be that we'll have the 2-butanone and we're going to show the oxygen here minus one electron and a positive charge associated with it okay now this is important because we now have an unpaired electron and an unpaired electron is also known as a radical these are very reactive and they will rapidly uh, continue to break apart and create other fragments once they are generated they tend to have uh, what we would call like a chain reaction type of mechanism all right, so once that radical is formed, let's take a look at pathway number one. So we'll switch colors here for each pathway. We'll do number one in blue. Okay, so this is uh, the fragmentation pattern for path number one if we're interested in an alpha cleavage. And we'll start with cleaving this uh, left-hand side portion as far as the alpha cleavage is concerned. So we've got CH3, CH2, Okay, we're going to explicitly draw this bond here. So this would really be attached to the carbon uh, and the carbonyl. Okay, and then remember we've got this radical, right, with the plus charge and the CH3. So that's what we're starting with. And what we are going to do then, uh, the way that this works, is that you would have a radical breakdown. So you're going to have one electron from this carbon-carbon bond go to the ethyl portion and the other one is going to get sent over to the carbonyl and then this electron will join it in order to make a triple bond so what this results in you get two fragments here the first one you get is a neutral radical hydrocarbon so remember if we go back up and we look here, that was one of the two products. Two fragments are produced, which include a neutral radical hydrocarbon and a carbonyl cation. So the carbonyl cation that we're going to get, we can show that, okay, so plus the other fragment, which I'm going to put in brackets here to show the charge, we would have oxygen, triple bond carbon, and then the CH3 group right here. And then this whole thing, is charged. So
So that would be path number one, okay? And as far as what's going to show up at the detector here, this would be the actual mass portion right here, right? Because the M over Z, that Z is the charge. So it's the cation that's actually showing up in the detector here. Okay, now I could certainly fragment the other way and have that show up at the detector as well. So we'll again shift colors here to do number two. Okay, so path number two is going to be very similar, but there will be a different alpha site that we're going to cleave at here. Okay, so again, keeping the same initial setup. So there's our oxygen. And this time we are going to have the radical form this way with the methyl and then this way, right? Like that. So what we would end up with is you're going to get the larger chunk here will now be the charged carbonyl. Again, similar to last time. So we can put all that into brackets and put the charge there. Plus, you would just end up with the CH3 radical. Now, one point I want to bring up here, uh, because we do have two different pathways, you do want to consider the stability, okay, of the radicals that are being left behind, right? So in general, radicals follow the same stability as carbocations, which means that a methyl radical is less likely than a primary radical, which will be less likely than a secondary radical, so on and so forth. So just keep that in mind in terms of which path may be preferred at some time. Uh, and that's based on stability, uh, hyperconjugation, a couple different effects that I've talked about on the channel before. But that is about it. So this, again, is a general review of alpha cleavage patterns for aldehydes and ketones. So I hope you found this useful. As always, hit the like button because that helps boost our content to other learners in the YouTube, YouTube algorithms. Excuse me. And if you hit subscribe, you will be up to date with everything as we are currently releasing it and helping you prepare for your semester or your work, whatever may lie ahead. Thank you for learning with us. If you leave any comments, I'll be sure to get back. Check us out at chemcomplete.com, and I will see everybody next time.